So that concludes the, the news conference with uh, Dr. Antonin Scalia and, and a number of city and state uh, officials uh, who have gathered there at the hospital. And all of them a unified message uh, for police officers, mm. how proud they are of them. And of course, the interesting thing was uh, the, uh, the doctor, Dr. Uh, Scalia, yeah. mm -hmm. talking about how the one officer's life was saved by the actions of his fellow officers, mm -hmm. applying that tourniquet and stopping the bleeding. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He said that officer had to go undergo emergency surgery, but could likely have bled out had these officers not know how to do this. And he mm -hmm. urged all of us to learn, which I plan to do. Absolutely. The, um, of course, he indicated that it's very serious but stable condition right now mm -hmm. for the uh, that one officer. And, of course, we're going to check in now with uh, Mike uh, uh, Helgren, who has been out on the scene. Mike, you've been listening in as well. Uh, anything that you didn't know before that you learned from this news conference? Commissioner told us that only one suspect was involved in this, but he was very uh, close to the vest when it came to information about this suspect. We heard more actually from the governor that this was a former corrections official who was involved in this. Authorities still have not named the suspect. Uh, we even heard that more agencies were involved than first thought in this. Uh, the governor expanded on that. And then at this press conference, we heard that Homeland Security, the Department of Public Safety, and U.S. Secret Service were also involved in this investigation, a large task force. Uh, the commissioner basically laid out in general terms what happened, and he said that the suspect was outside of the building when the gunshots were fired, but he didn't provide any more information uh, on uh, details on how this unfolded. He said all of that is still under investigation. A violent scene in northeast Baltimore just after noon today when a Baltimore City and a Baltimore County officer were shot while trying to apprehend a fugitive wanted out of Pennsylvania on a felony warrant. The U.S. Marshal's Office was involved in the task force as well as MDTA and Maryland State Police. Neighbors report hearing multiple gunshots. I just was walking down the street and I got to my parking lot uh, back here because I live in uh, the adjacent apartments and that's when I heard the gunshots. One officer was shot in the stomach, one in the leg. They were taken to shock trauma. The area around an apartment complex on Radicky Avenue was blocked off as police completed their investigation with a massive presence of law enforcement officers. It's a former uh, state corrections official who had been under investigation, who left his job and uh, who then was uh, who was, uh, had a warrant outstanding for attempted murder in Pennsylvania last night uh, and who uh, came back to uh, Baltimore and then w was involved in the shooting today. It's devastating, you know. Uh, you know things go, go down everywhere that you uh, live at, but when it hits close to home, it, it becomes a little bit more personal. And we've heard uh, from multiple city and county leaders about how dangerous the jobs of police officers are. This is an inherently dangerous job, and we've seen that in recent days with other officers either being injured or shot here in Baltimore City and also in Anne Arundel County. We're still waiting for more investigative details, but those officers are on the mend right now. One just got out of surgery. The governor told us that the other was in good spirits, but a term Tourniquet likely saved one of those officers' lives. And as far as the scene where I'm standing right now, they have reopened these roads. This area was closed off for some time, but they have now reopened that area and given people access to go back in closer to that apartment complex. Reporting live in Northeast Baltimore, Mike Helgren, WJZ. Okay, Mike, thank you very much. Let's go now to Paul Gesser, who's also live on the scene with more reaction. Paul. Hi, Vicki. We're on the corner of Daywalt and Sedonia, and I can echo what Mike just said. Since the police have taken down the crime scene tape about 20, 25 minutes ago, it has really opened up a good bit. We are still now about as close as we can be to the actual scene where all this went down. And what you're looking at now, just right around the corner uh, of this apartment complex on the left side of your screen at Garden Village Apartments on the corner of Sedonia. Uh, 
Sorry, there are some uh, people honking behind us. Sidonia and Radicky. And what you're looking at now, there's a tree right on the front side. There's an entrance right there where the suspect's body was. Um, it, it was under a white sheet uh, when we first got here and for the last couple hours. But within about uh, the last 45 minutes or so, that suspect's body has been taken away from the scene. And a short time later is when they opened up um, the, the road closures. And now it's finally open to local traffic. And we've seen a lot of uh, school buses and empty. TA buses finally make their way through. Uh, I want to take you now to what we just heard moments ago from Commissioner Harrison. Take a listen. As we know, crime has no boundaries, and gun crimes affect us all. We ask that you keep our officers in your prayers as we go out each and every day to serve and protect. We ask that you keep their families in your prayers as they stand by their sides as they recover. This is a dangerous job. But the men and women of Baltimore City, Baltimore County, and all of our state and federal agencies, we wake up every day, and we go do it for the people of the city we live in. We do it every day to make this a better place to live, work, and visit. That's a law enforcement perspective on how dangerous it was for them as two officers were shot here uh, early, early this afternoon at the noontime hour. It was also really, really stressful and dangerous for some other uh, people in the building. We heard secondhand through someone whose uh, wife and daughter were in the apartment or next to where all this went down, and she described it threw her husband to us as though it was like a bomb going off. She hid with her daughter uh, until all that commotion settled down. Uh, we have not heard whether the apartment complex is open. They have uh, taken the suspect's body away from the scene. They've loosened up some of the area a little bit, but still, it's as you see behind me, layers of crime scene tape, of we, as we've seen many of the leaders from Baltimore City Police in and out of this scene while the others are down at shock trauma. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Paul. And speaking of shock trauma, that is where Kelsey Kushner has been all afternoon, and that's where those officers are still in residence, being treated right now. I know you just listened. Kelsey, what did you learn? Yeah, Denise, well, Dr. Thomas Scalia says that both of those officers are inside upstairs in shock trauma. He says one of the officers required an emergency operation, the other under observation. He says both officers are awake. They are listed as serious but stable condition. He says that one of their lives was likely saved by a tourniquet. Take a listen. One required an emergency operation. The other is under observation. Uh, both are awake, though uh, still in very serious condition. Uh, at least if, at this point, the vital signs are stable. I will take 30 more seconds for an editorial. At least one of their lives was likely saved by application of a tourniquet uh, applied by their uh, fellow officers. Tourniquets save lives. Now, we also heard from the mayor who, uh, or excuse me, from Governor Hogan, who says that it is frustrating that this happens time and time again in Baltimore. You know, we've seen it before. He says, you know, that there needs to be something done to make sure that this doesn't happen again. We also heard from Baltimore County Executive Johnny Olszewski, Baltimore City State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby. They got up to the podium tonight to say, you know, that they just, they're offering their prayers, their condolences, you know, to the family, you know, you know praying for a speedy recovery here. Um, you know, the commissioner, Michael Harrison, got up. He said that, you know, this is a perfect example of just how dangerous this job is and how every single day, you know, an officer puts his life on the line here just to make sure, you know, the city is safe. And, and it's unfortunate when situations like this happen again. Now, both city and county officials, again, they thanked all of the officers. They said that this was a local, state, federal response that came out here. They thanked them for all of their hard work excuse me, for their hard work. They are praying for a speedy recovery. Again, just want to recap what, what we know about those two officers that are here at Shock Trauma. Uh, both officers are awake. They're listed as serious but stable condition. And, of course, they are hoping for a quick and full recovery. Back to you.